So, furthermore, all believers cannot claim to be sinless at any time. Thus, the works they do for the Lord are contaminated by imperfections which are unacceptable to God. So, how do you get rewards? It says so here. 1 John 1 8, we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves. Truth not in us. <clears throat> also, if we claim to have not sin, we make him out to be a liar, and his word is no place in our lives. And Paul uh, talks about himself. We know that the law is spiritual, and I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do, but what I want to do, I do not do, <coughs> but what I hate to do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good, as it is. It is no longer I myself would do it, but it is sin living in me. It goes on to say, I know that nothing good lives in me, that is my sinful nature. For I have the desire, this is the Apostle Paul, I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. And this is not before he became saved. This is after. But it says, for I have the desire to do what is good. He's a believer now, but I cannot carry it out. But what I do is not the good I want to do. No, the evil I do not want to do. This I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. When I want to do good, evil is right there with me to struggle. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. <coughs> but I see another law at work in the members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind, and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within my members. What a wretched man am I! Who will rescue me from this body of death? Answer that. Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. He was a believer at the time writing this in Romans 7. So then I myself, in my mind, am a slave to God's law, but in the sinful nature a slave to the law of sin. Just as the prayers of the believer are interceded for by the Holy Spirit, so the faithful works of the believer are directed and interceded for by God so as to make them acceptable to God and rewardable to the believer. Romans 8, 26-27 In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. There is not a pure moment an individual can claim to have even during those moments when he is following the leading of the Holy Spirit. But God perfects the believer's actions so that as to make them rewardable. So by the grace of God you get rewarded. Just follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Keep on following. Keep on studying. Circumstances will be provided for you to share your faith. For example, when the gospel is presented by a believer to another, although it is contaminated by the believers in dwelling sin nature's motivations, yet God uses the information presented and sees to it that the one being spoken to receives the truth of the gospel and is enabled to believe it in it and be saved. It's the volition of the individual, but also the grace of God working. For, for participating in this action, albeit imperfectly, the believer is nevertheless to be provided with an internal reward. You have to read that whole passage. When you get down to verse 25 of, of Romans chapter 7, what a great message. Let's read that again. It's, it's heartening. Verse 25, Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord, Paul says, So then I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in the sinful nature a slave to the law of sin. So through the Lord Jesus Christ, he will rescue Paul from this body of death and reward him. All that he went through, <coughs> shall we not follow in his lead? Shall we not follow in Christ's instructions? So, 
In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. So you pray what you, you have in mind, and the Holy Spirit will perfect that prayer and answer it. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. There is not a pure moment an individual can claim to have, even during those moments when he is following the leading of the Holy Spirit. But God perfects the believer's actions so as to make them rewardable. For example, when the gospel is presented by a believer to another, although it is contaminated by the believer's indwelling sin nature's motivation, Yet God uses the information presented and sees to it that the one thing spoken to receive the truth of the gospel and is enabled, the one being spoken to receives the truth of the gospel and is enabled to believe in it and be saved. While participating in this action, albeit imperfectly, the believer is nevertheless to be provided with an eternal reward. Of course, <clears throat> I'm an advocate of studying the scripture, keeping it simple, and memorizing passages and a good translation so that when you present it, it might be accurate, but then you don't have control over the person listening and the people listening around you. And I like to go back and back so that I can make sure to the best of my finite, flawed ability that the message gets presented. You don't add um, new words to Scripture. So you don't ask Jesus uh, to be your Savior. You simply believe Jesus died for your sins, John 3.16. And then mention and quote John 3.16 or your other, other verses that are uh, you favor. I like John 3.16 because it says, For God so loved the world with a great enthusiasm and a finality. What did he do? The next verse, the next part of the verse. That he gave... His one and only son. What does that mean? He gave his one and only son. He's talking to Nicodemus, a Jewish Pharisee priest, and sacrifices. So if he's talking to Nicodemus, well, a sacrifice for sins. The, the priest's sacrifices of animals uh, are substitutionary. For the real thing, who's Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who died for our sins. See how that works. Then, whoever believes in that, see, he doesn't ask to do more than just recognize and believe that God's one only Son gave, was was uh, given for your sins, made paid the penalty for your sins. People go on the whole diatribe. That's not in John 3.16, and that's sufficient in that verse for you to believe, and it gets what you get. For whoever believes that, Actually, it's literally for whoever is the believing one in that. So, in the moment of becoming the believing one, the moment's time, present tense, has everlasting life. How long does that last? Forever. That everlasting life becomes a part of you, just like your physical life is a part of you. Your everlasting life becomes a part of you, and you will be transformed, perfect resurrection body, with your experiential everlasting life. Right now we have possession of it, but we're not experiencing the perfect resurrection life because we haven't died yet. But when you get your resurrection body, you'll have that experiential, wonderful, experiential, everlasting life with, with sinless perfection, just like the Lord's resurrection body. So peace, hope, and joy, the inner happiness of the faithful believer. John 14, 27. Peace I, Jesus Christ, leave with you to his disciples. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives, but I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. Romans 5, 1 and 2. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We're not at enmity anymore. Through him also we have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we exalt in hope of the glory of God. Now that's, a sure, I want to put this in there, a sure hope, El Pida. Maybe I'll put, that's the Greek transliteration, El, 
means sure, a sure hope of the glory of God. Oh, then LPD. Okay. Right, right, the right one. A sure hope. A confident expectation, a sure hope, which one can boast in because one's salvation is absolutely assured by God. We boast in it because God is assured that we have it. And these verses corroborate that. Believers not only have God's supernatural peace, but they can exult. In other words, rejoice in LPD, the sure hope of the fact that they will be glorified by God and be with him for the rest of eternity in heaven, no matter what. People want to walk out of the room when they hear that. I didn't write the Bible. Compare Galatians 5, 22 to 23a. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. The fruit of the Spirit, that's the behavior which a believer manifests by virtue of God, the Holy Spirit's supernatural work in him and through him. It is a work of God through the believer, yet it is the believer doing that very work himself, exercising his own volition. My pastor was sent a, a text message to a friend of mine, and he says, the Holy Spirit's working these good works in the believer. He left the other part out, but the believer still has to study the Word of God, follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, and then God will provide circumstances for which he must go to those circumstances, like having conversations with people about the gospel. So the volition of the believer is involved, and the Holy Spirit provides those uh, those faithful works as well. I. This is something that the sovereignty of God works in you to do good works that you, of your own volition, choose to do. What a great teamwork. But you have to do your part, otherwise you don't get the work, good works. You have, to, you have to know what to say. How do you know what to say? Don't make it up. Study the Word of God. Even quote it. <coughs> Because if you don't quote it and tell people where to find it, how are they going to find it in their Bible? Make Jesus the Lord of your life. You can't make him the Lord of your life. He is Lord of your life. Right? Make Jesus your Savior. He is your Savior. Believe. And then he gives you the gift of eternal life. If you didn't believe, then he's not going to exercise your salvation unto eternal life. He's asking you to believe in what he did for you. That's not too much to ask, right? Now let, compare Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God which surpasses all comprehension shall guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The key to inner happiness and blessings on earth and rewards in heaven is to trust in God with your whole being, start, starting with a serious study, trust, and obedience to what he has said in his word. We can go back to the Old Testament. Valuable. Proverbs 3, 1 to 35. My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. The length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Author Solomon instructs his son to keep remembering, in other words, keep following his commands, God's commands in his word, those of which from God's word, Philip, uh, Proverbs 2, 1 to 6. For one will then live longer and with supernatural peace. Do not let kindness and truth leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favor and good repute in the sight of God and men. Favor and a good name in the sight of God and man is a res result of study, understanding, and faithfulness to his word. And I like this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart your mind, your capacity. And do not lean on your own understanding. What understanding you lean on? The Word of God. <clears throat> in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. To trust in God requires...